morning ladies and gentlemen my presentation today will be about the principles of smile design I will start with the facial analysis uh, the facial analysis involves in the frontal plane we have the midline this is very important it should be exactly in the middle of the face and when we do the facial analysis we should do it for the face as a whole the eyes the nose the teeth the lips everything in the frontal plane we have as we said the incisal edge position which should be parallel to the interpapillary line and the midline between the two centrals should be exactly in the middle of the face and when the patient smiles the line from the center of the eye to the cusp of the canine should be parallel to the line from the angle of the eye the distal angle of the eye to the corner of the mouth when the, when the patient smiles in the sagittal plane, the rickets E plane, which connects the tip of the nose to the chain prominence, should be four millimeter away from the upper lip, two millimeters away from the lower lip. And the nasolabial angle should be 90 to 95 degrees in the males and 100 to 100 in females for the smile and dental analysis we look at the gum and the lips all together as one unit and we will start with the sequence of the smile design first we define the lips and step one we establish the incisal edge position. As we said, the incisal edge position should be parallel to the interpopulary line. And the incisal edge position should be respecting the phonetics. So when the lips are at rest, and this is when the patient say the M sound, the amount of tooth showing when the lips at rest this is very important and the more tooth visible the younger the look the more tooth visible the younger the look and the for the phonetics when the patient say the f sound the incisal edge should be touching the inner border of the lip and plus the S sound it should sound okay because the anterior maxillary teeth affects the S sound now the midline as we mentioned before should be exactly in the middle of the face and once we establish the midline we start with the central incisor the central incisor according to the rule 78 percent the width of the central should be 78 percent the length of the central and once we do it on one side we establish the gingival margin so we established first the incisal edge position now with this rule 78 percent we establish the gingival margin accordingly and once we do it for the central we do it for the lateral and the canine and we have here two different ways the classic way that the incis that the mar gingival margin should be a little lower than the margin of the central incisor like half to one millimeter and the canine should be equal to the central 
or we have the modified way that the central and lateral are almost equal and the canine a little higher. Once we create one central, the other central will be a mirror image, exactly symmetrical. And the laterals and canines is according to the golden proportion. The golden proportion, as we know, the lateral is the one, the central is 1.6, and the canine, the mesial part of the canine is 0 0.6. We extend now the smile to the corners. And here it's very important to have filled the buccal corridor. This is a very important point that we close this area. We don't leave it like here. I will like, like what's called the hollow smile. Here we have the breast, three molars. So it gives us a hollow smile. And we don't forget the medial inclination of the teeth. It gives a nice look. And here, showing and here showing the medial inclination and the closing the buccal cord. Now we design the shape and texture of individual teeth. And here we have different shapes. We can share it with the patient and decide which is my design, what they want for regarding the shape of the teeth. As we see here, we have the aggressive style, dominant style. It's all about the angles of the anterior teeth and the roundation and the length. Some of them rounded easily and distally. Some of them are have sharp edge, medial and distally. Here the natural style, which I like more. It's rounded only distally a little. Now, how to communicate with the patient? There should be a way to communicate with the patient before the lab technician is the one is taking decision regarding the shape and everything and we cannot share this information with the patient. We start with the aesthetic diagnosis. So the photo for us is like x-ray for dentists before. It's very important to have this frontal facial photo with showing all the details and the ears should showing equally. and the smile of the patient. So the dentist before was doing the diagnosis, treatment plan, and the lab technician is doing the design and the producing. Now, not anymore. The dentist can do the diagnosis and the planning and designing and send all this information to the lab technician where he can produce the final prosthesis. So the patient's needs are based more and more on aesthetics. It's not like before. Before the patient wants only to fill the gap, that's it. Now the demands are very high and everything is different. So we need to visualize everything. And once the patients see the final result, before they start, they are going for it. So they want to know exactly, and so are the dentists. They want to know where are they going to end up. Here's a case. Who can tell me what the problem with this case? Yeah. Uh, exactly. So the, it's the incisor is position here and the midline is a little tilted toward the left side. And whose fault is that? The lab could 
the lab did a good job. They don't know exactly where the midline of the patient and here the result. So what if there is a way to visualize everything from the beginning and to know the midline and we blend it well like here and once we blend on the face of the patient no more mistakes here's what's called Facebook in this software this software is nowadays are cutting edge technology which allow you to design everything and communicate with the patient, share the information with the patient, and send it to the lab. And you will get the, re the result that you see on your computer. Here's another case. The patient showing with this case, what can we do? How can we convince the patient? Here's the planning on the software. You can plan it. Show it to the patient. Once you get approval, you send it to the lab together with the impression where they do the wax up, the final wax up, and you deliver it to the patient. Another case. Here we started, here we ended up. So all this, using one facial photo, one facial picture. Using some tools like what's called the M ruler and the digital face bow and physical articulator. This articulator allows us to transfer these lines from the software to the lab, to the cast. So they will have exactly the lines that we draw on the face of the patient, they will have it in the lab exactly. So once accepted, we send it to the lab together with the impression, they cast it, they produce the final prosthesis, and we deliver it to the patient. And here is the case before and after. So the sequence is step one. We get the photo of the patient, facial photo, clear one, has special characteristics. Step two, we diagnose, we plan, we design, we share this information with the patient. Once we get acceptance, we send it to the lab, and the lab produces the final prosthesis, and we deliver it to the patient. Here I'm going to share with you a small, a short video showing such softwares, what can we do with it. So we choose the name. We will write, in, uh, write down the name of the patient. We choose this photo. We choose the procedure that we want. There is whitening, correction, full mouth rehabilitation. This is called face bow. We put it exactly in the middle of the face and we, we dis the, uh, determine the incisal edge position. Now, we define the inner border of the lips. This is important step. You should take your time doing that. And this is what's called the M ruler. The M ruler gives us uh, the golden proportion. So once we put the width of the central incisor, everything will be calculated automatically. And we can, of course, correct these lines 
here we put the, the width of the two centers together as we want it and as we see it what's nice about this software that it can give us a real image a real result not only Photoshop just we show it to the patient and then we cannot reproduce it no we can adapt everything including the uh, gingival margin, the incisal edge, the width of the teeth, the buccal corridor, everything. Here you see, as we see, we can change the occlusal plane. Here you see, adjusting the occlusal plane raising it a little and at any time we can see before and after to make a good adaptation and realistic image you see at, at any time you can compare between before and after you can as well using some tools you can add shadow here under the lip upper lip so it gives us a real image and we can adjust also the brightness of the teeth the gum color and we can bear it And once the patient accepts it, we save everything. We send it to the lab by email. The lab also should have the same software and the tools we said about the articulator. So what you see is exactly what you want, is exactly what you get. And this is what's nice about this software. So as a summary, using the systematic approach and such softwares, designing the smile becomes predictable and easy. The details are in the collection of data. Using this data exactly where it is required, this will achieve a beautiful smile. All the features of this smile coming together to complement the patient's face. Thank you very much.